program uh, say vinay thyagraj now uh, the speaker of uh, second session advocate suhail ahmed uh, he will be joining soon as uh, he is in a court and uh, one more person was scheduled to be a speaker mr uh, krishna prasad i think uh, he has on a uh, particular event and uh, my dear secretary says that this tg uh, Trisher, Sipolson, my members sitting online. Good afternoon. So today, Trishul Branch is conducting a VCM on a uh, real estate uh, regulatory act, RERA. Now, uh, the real estate industry plays a key role in uh, fulfilling the requirements of the country's uh, housing and uh, infrastructures. So now there is a necessity to know the basics of the RERA Act as a tax professional and uh, definitely while handling these uh, various SSEs uh, files in our uh, regular tax matters in our day-to-day -day profession, uh, some of our clients may be doing construction activity or uh, they will be buying houses. Lots of issues uh, related to or uh, transactions related to real estate will come up in our day-to-day -day life. Now, uh, to have a basic necessary understanding of uh, the RERA Act is uh, very important. Now, I understand that uh, before the introduction of the RERA Act, uh, these uh, real estate transactions uh, were uh, unequal and uh, very densely in favor of the developers. Now, uh, government's aim in introducing the e this Act is to create a more equitable and uh, fair transaction between the seller and the buyer of properties, especially in the primary market. So the RERA came into existence and I understand that it's designed in such a way that it will make the real estate purchase more simpler by bringing in better accountability and transparency. Now, it, it's the structure of it is uh, it's made mandatory for each state and uh, unit territory uh, to form its own regulations and uh, frame the rules that will govern the functioning of the regulator. Now, Kerala has its own regulations and uh, all the details are available in the site. I was just uh, say, checking the RERA site, rera.kerala.gov.in, uh, uh, one of the sites that uh, gives all the details and it gives all the... And if you visit that website uh, before buying a property to confirm whether it, uh, it is uh, registered under the authority, you can all check these things. Now, obviously, with the real estate scenario, sector in the state, of Kerala showing signs of revival in the post pandemic scenario and the government pushing for uh, imposing huge penalties, uh, especially for non registration of RERA and things like that. Uh, the importance of RERA has grown. So that's why this uh, VCM uh, that the Trishur plan, uh, branch plant. Now, our speakers are all part of the firm. Uh, RERA Consultants LLP headquartered in Bangalore, and I understand that they have a uh, local presence in Kerala, in Cochin. So they themselves uh, pride uh, themselves in being the only RERA, professional RERA consultants in India to provide end-to-end -end, uh, services under the RERA Act. So uh, I sh should uh, uh, welcome the speakers first. The first speaker is a uh, fellow member of our institute having his own firm, but uh, very particular about the same that he specializes in RERA uh, for the last five years. So I do welcome uh, C.A. Vinay Tyagraj uh, to this lecture. So the second speaker is uh, one of the top advocates in practice in RERA. And uh, he is presently in the court. He will be joining us later. And I do welcome advocate Suhail Ahmed in his absence. He will be joining us later. And I also welcome the other persons who are all uh, part of this uh, company, this, their LLP, the RERA Consultants LLP. I also welcome other attendees assembled over here and I also welcome my Secretary C.S. Satish T.G. Now, uh, I would like to remind the members about some areas in which uh, these uh, four more days uh, for our expiry of that uh, ARS early bird registration. And uh, we have sent a reminder message email from the branch now, I understand that around uh, 68 members are there to renew. Last uh, week, almost uh, 70 members had uh, renewed. Uh, the total number of uh, members uh, almost uh, is coming up to a good number of a uh, good number. Now, almost uh, only 68 members are uh, there to renew. So kindly, there are five more, four more days also. So kindly do renew the same. 
and uh, do send the screenshot to the branch you are all doing the same thanks a lot and uh, i do remind uh, of course in the opening session i we the branch has displayed that the 21st world congress of accountants it's an, a huge uh, important event for us chartered accountants and a once in a millennial event and uh, do register for the same most some of the members has already uh, registered physical for the physical event and there is an online event also you can register online if you are not able to go to mumbai now uh, one very important thing is that we had already circulated that uh, campus placement uh, google form for the firms so i understand that around uh, 17 colleges in uh, trishu district has expressed uh, interest in providing students for this uh, campus recruitment so i understand that most of the firms in this present scenario are facing a dearth of these audit assistants uh, staff and things like that so the campus placement program will be conducted during the period uh, in june up to 25 first uh, june to 25th june so there will be an online pre-employment training uh, program for the recruiters uh, by the sarc of ICA themselves uh, so as to stream their employability so it's a very good initiative by the sarc and uh, definitely we all firms in trishur and uh, nearby areas do have this uh, huge uh, dearth in uh, uh, students uh, so utilize this opportunity so i would like to also inform the members about the coming programs uh, that is tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we have that uh, national conference on gst in palakkad and uh, i hope uh, lots of around 20 to 25 members of trishul branch has already registered and uh, spot registrations are being encouraged this palakkad is very nearby it's just a drive and uh, you can listen to wonderful speakers now on uh, Monday, 30th, we have a CP program in the branch premises uh, on uh, GST. The faculties, see, uh, think Christopher from Bangalore, and the topic is uh, replying to notices and assessment procedures. It's a very wonderful program, wonderful, uh, very important uh, seminar, and uh, it, uh, the, the Palakkad uh, National Conference uh, has not covered about such subject. So kindly do make yourself free on that day. And also, I just uh, like to inform, take this opportunity to inform the members that our sports events, uh, which is being planned on 4th and 5th next month, and uh, ACP seminar also is uh, being planned on uh, insolvency and the bankruptcy code on 4th also in the evening. So these are all the events. And the 7th, there is a uh, seminar also. Uh, in due course, we'll be informing you. So these are some of the activities, uh, upcoming activities of the Shul branch and uh, do make yourself uh, free. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, before moving on, uh, passing on the baton to Mr. Vinay Tyagaraj, uh, I would like to uh, call upon our treasurer Paulson, sir, to just uh, introduce the faculties. I know that uh, Mr. Suhail Ahmed, uh, Advocate Suhail Ahmed will be joining later but uh, person sir you can just uh, introduce both of them right now at one shot i understand that it will be a panel discussion so dear members you may utilize that uh, question and answer session to raise your queries uh, tyagaraj sir you will be uh, answering the queries uh, right away or uh, during that part of the session whatever may be okay. oh yes uh, let the post the question in the chat box yes, yes, yes. take up so parallelly Okay, okay, okay. I so members are problem, encouraged sir. to raise their queries in the Q&A box. Yeah. And uh, definitely the faculty will be taking on. It's a panel discussion. Uh, over to you, Paul Simpson. Very dear friends of this elegant profession of Canada government. Wish you all a wonderful afternoon. Today we have a seminar, webinar, which is being handled by two experts in South India. One of them is a member of, uh, fellow member of our profession and is also a law graduate. Now the speaker, the second speaker is one of the leading lawyers in South India. And they carry with them approximately 20 years of professional expertise in investments, taxation, GST, RERA, property laws, corporate laws and other civil laws. They represent as, there are two, uh, two of them are senior principal financial consultants in one of the leading RERA specialized organizations in South India, RERA Consultants, LLP in Bangalore. They carry with them 
20 years of experience and they have taken almost 170 workshops and webinars across South India. You name it and they are in uh, most of the committees in Karnataka state by the state government, many educational and professional institutions in Karnataka. And also they are in the committees of ICAI. They are also regular in uh, panelists in Canada TVs, Suvarna TV, Raj TV, and TV9. With this, I would like to introduce Chartered Accountant Vinay Tyagaraj and Advocate Suhail Ahmed to this wonderful audience. Thank you. Screen is yours. So can I continue? Can I take it forward? Is this okay, sir? Yes, it is okay. Can you please enlarge it? Make it this is okay. Okay, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. You should. Uh, very good afternoon to all the members here, members, students, and other participants. It's it's a great privilege to uh, have a session on RERA and to the Trishur branch of uh, SIRC of ICAI. Thank you, Ajit sir and Paulson, Paulson sir for a nice introduction of ours. And um, looking forward to hear from your members, Kerala members in terms of their queries and clarification and RERA. Couple of things I would like to uh, uh, say before I start the session. This being the technical session, I'm sitting here, you're all sitting there. Most of the cameras are off. And absolutely, I do not know uh, how effective is my reach, my talking, my delivery. So I request the members to keep post their questions or clarify anything which they require in the chat box, number one. Number two, in between, you should say whether I'm audible, not audible. If it is not, you have to say, sir, you're not there, you're sleeping. Okay, number two. Number three, I may pose some questions in between. Members can say yes, no, not applicable, are they or not, okay? So just to interact, just to be active because on Friday afternoon, post lens session, we are all uh, 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 planning to take a weekend on Saturday and Sunday and you being here that shows that members are interested and committed to have a interaction on RERA. Thank you so much for the Trishur branch for hosting this and uh, in the interest of all the members and, and the participants. For all the members and participants, this month is celebrated as a RERA month itself. So because the RERA has, uh, was effective from 1st May 2017, we have completed about five years of its implementation across India. However, Kerala is only two years because Kerala started its, uh, even though Act is, is prior to 1-1-2020, but however, authority and the regulator has been appointed with effective 1-1-2020. About two and a half years of RERA working at uh, Kerala. Otherwise, it's about five years of implementation across the across India. As Mr. Ajit mentioned, this is a central act. This is a central act and uh, where states are given a power to regulate and also notify the rules and also regulate. But as we all members are aware that when there is an act is there, rules cannot or should or like it can't expand beyond the act. So whatever be the rules which is formed, drafted, or the notification or circular which are issued by the authority, it should be within the framework of the act itself. Having said, this today's session would be handled by three speakers. All are equally competent in their way, in their own practice. And I'm um, happens to be a chartered accountant and a law graduate, but continue to practice as a chartered accountant without leaving a COP, jump into the advocate profession. So it's my passion to talk on this subject because it is not that I have a knowledge because the act has so much in it. So whatever we talk, so there is some much more to talk about this. So act and the content and the knowledge and the wisdom of the act is so much like uh, what I'm talking, uh, talking today is because of the act. It is not about my experience or my knowledge or my wisdom. 
So for the purpose of today's session, when I was speaking to the branch or my people were speaking to the branch, they wanted to know like, uh, what would be the role of our members? Because even though it's a five years of implementation, not many members have got the insight of this. What is there for them in this, pro in this uh, uh, act? Is there any opportunity for them? If so, what would be their opportunity? and how do they represent the client or the builders, promoters, community, or to all the stakeholders to say that RERA, even I have a role to play here and I can provide the services under RERA. So that's the one one would, would like to say about role of importance of chartered accountants and other professionals under RERA. When I say other professionals under RERA, they're including the architects and the advocates and the engineers or surveyors I, I, I will touch upon each each uh, professional's role under the RERA. And maybe it may be useful for you to work together with other professionals, make it as a vibrant. As, as Mr. Ajit mentioned, I also represent a, a firm called RERA Consultants. It's like there are various consultants and it's about 25 consultants are here from the different background of field where uh, I provide the financial consultation, couple of others provide the financial consultation, and a few are advocates are here, architects are here, engineers are here, because the real estate is so that one profession cannot address the uh, problem or a concern. It requires the idea and the knowledge of other professionals without which the practice is becomes a limited, restricted, or may not be effective also. That is what, when I say that chartered accountants, what is there in chartered accountants? Just mere reading of an act, it shows only chartered accountant. I will have a role to play as only to issue a certificate for the purpose of withdrawal of funds. I don't see much uh, role to play if you see this as at the individual level. But if you look at the team level, if you make a team to render some services, yes, there is a big role to play, big opportunity for the professionals Collectively, they play a role. So that's what important when we look at this as a rera, because this is a typical different industry. Can anybody say in the chart or the car in the uh, in the um, uh, 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 maybe in the voice also why it is difficult different than any other industry? Can anybody say how this real estate is different than any other industry based on your experience, either as a professional? or as a customer of any of the project, or maybe a builder of any of the project, or maybe advisor of any other project, or any other as part of the stakeholders, how real estate is different than any other, any other industry. We know various industries, it may be a service industry, it may be a goods industry, manufacturing, or it may be a software, it may be a fisheries, it may be a tourism, it may be a, anything you call it as, why real estate is a different industry. Why do we uh, 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 look, this industry is something which is a different compared to anything else? Anybody can say? Is it that uh, the investment size is huge or something? Okay. The one driven, maybe it's a driven with the public money, perfect. Some money condenser has mentioned it is driven with the public money. Maybe except the bank or except a chit fund or NBFC, no other business has something which has a huge public money. Okay, this industry has a huge public money. And till Vera, who was regulating this? We have a bank, we know Reserve Bank of India, RBI Act, which is way back in 1940s. We have a Chit Fund Act, we have a NBFC Act. Wherever there is a public money involved, there is a regulator to it. Till 2017, even though we call it as a huge money which is involved, which is of the public, there were no regulator to it. There was no regulators to it. But it took almost about 75 years from the date of independence for the government to bring some regulation to this industry. That is what I try to say that this is a very different industry compared to any other industry. One is it's a public money. Second, it requires a, a more investment compared to any other uh, industry. Number three, the product is not ready to sell. What you sell is an idea. 
when other product like a similar investment you wanted to purchase a car of 50 lakh rupees when will you purchase once the production is ready when it has come to a showroom i'll go take the test drive open the bonnet open the dicky what not then only i will book it i will completely satisfy myself about a product or a service which i going to enjoy but real estate industry how it works it is an idea of an architect it's an idea of an engineer showing something that this is how your product will come out good if it is come out in the same way and manner and the fashion if they have shown otherwise there would be a challenges uh in between if there are challenges in between the product may not be the same what they have delivered it so this industry is very much different to any other industry in the fashion of whether it's a money whether it's a delivery whether it's a disputes and the stakes and for many 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 people the stakes are very high where in terms of their lifetime earning would be at stake so those are all the particular to this industry only finally it is where uh, it is not only to a certain group of people where it is applicable every human being every family has a asp aspiration to have one real estate for their life either maybe a plot or maybe a building or a apartment villa whatever you say it. the moment they satisfy their basic need of food and the education and the clothing next they look at is a shelter only the shelter move from a rented house to a lease house to your own house so having said that every one is exposed invariably to this industry so it's very much important for a government are very much important for the uh, uh, stakeholders to have some regulation in this industry so hence rera is in picture and if you see that objective of rera i will not touch the fundamental basics of it i am sure that uh, there are earlier sessions on rera on this branch i do not remember whether i have addressed thrissur branch or not but uh, no, i will not touch upon the basics of it but if anyone has any doubt on uh, on this you can uh, certainly you can post a question i will answer to that so objectives of rera if you look at that very very well drafted take a care of what is really intended as this as as the act accountability ensure the accountability all we are know that how much this industry was accountable to the customers prior to the rera in picture transparency we know that how much was the transparency we had because as i told you product is not ready and the product to become ready and how much was the initial offering what was the final delivery in between what happened whether there is a transparent way of communication whether transparent way of giving the information was that available earlier the answer may not be not all point of time third is professionalism if you ask me what is the professionalism required for this industry to start the, to have this business is any qualification required or any requirement for somebody to become a builder the answer is no anybody can become a builder but the stakes are higher the industry itself is a different industry one would be playing with the public money at large so in order to bring some professionalism in terms of carrying out their business it is not about like what they deliver it but carrying out the business in terms of uh, following some of the compliances whether it may be a financial compliances in case of a borrowings in case of a reporting aspect in terms of a quality of the products they use it in terms of a material guarantee so bring some professionalism to this industry but it is a pan india so this is what has been introduced maybe during the presentation i will try to touch upon each of this how this has been inbuilt in this act how how uh, rera is taken care of entire objective of rera how it is achieved i will let you know during the presentation establish symmetry of information between the promoter and the allotee earlier information availability was itself was a, a dull or maybe a dark once you book an apartment or a villa till end we may not be knowing what's happening at the site how much project is completed 
for the purpose of safety, safety and security purpose, I as a customer were never allowed inside the project to see that what's happening. And absolutely, I do not have an, any idea except to receive a demand letter stating that your demand is due for 60 lakhs rupees for the sixth milestone. If I ask you what is completed, they may send you one certificate of an architect stating 50% of the project is completed. But I do not know really it is completed is that the uh, details which they have shared is the information which were they reporting to some other agency also is the same thing which has to be looked into. As we all know that for the purpose of the banker, they issue a more percentage because to avail the loan arbitral for the purpose of taxing authority, taxation authority, the percentage always used to be low because of incident and impact on the taxation. Post era, the symmetry of information, the information available is one and the one, which is throughout all from the stakeholders to stakeholder to agency to agency till the alert would be the same. Maybe it's, it's about five years and it's utilize its applicability, its usage from, uh, from the, all the perspective of the stakeholders, maybe now not much mature, but down the line, I'm sure the way this in the past five years, where first year to five years, there is a lot sea change. There is a lot of changes in terms of the reporting aspect, in terms of the uh, compliance aspect of this industry, which you also have experience if you are dealing with the customer, uh, real estate clients. Certain responsibilities, both have some responsibility. As a, as a customer, I have a responsibility to behave or provide my information properly, make payment of installment in terms of the uh, 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 linked payment plan, like a construction linked payment plan, or whenever there's a due for me to make the payment, I have obligation and responsibility to make a payment to the builder. Like builder or a promoter also has an obligation to construct and deliver the project within the time which they have mentioned. So this is, is the responsibility on both the people and establish a regulatory oversight mechanism. As we know that in spite of 70 years, second largest industry after agriculture, second largest contribution to the employment, second largest of GDP, still we didn't have a regulatory mechanism to this industry. Here is a era which establish, which intention is to regulate this industry and achieve all the objectives under this act. Establish a fast track dispute resolution as we know that how much the courts used to take in terms of the uh, dispute resolution, disposal of the complaints cases. Now, RERA, within 60 days, Act mandates the uh, authority to dispose the 60 within 60 days of their filing a complaint. Do you think that any other forum gives better than uh, uh, RERA to dispose within 60 days? The answer is no. So, here there is an inbuilt, inbuilt uh, mechanism of disposing the initial complaint within 60 days. In case of the tribunal, in case of the appeal, another 60 days. Maximum 60 days plus 30 days is the time for them to appeal, another 60 days. 150 days you are clear with the case and the complaint. So with this, there is a faster dispute mechanism, a resolution mechanism which is inbuilt. Finally, there is a good governance. With the object, achievement of all these objective, there is no doubt, there is no second opinion that there will not be a good governance. All stakeholders and entire industry will be under a good governance. As we all know initially, what was the um, fate of investment pre-SEBI, post-SEBI? In 1991-92, if you hear about the investment, we do not know. A simple slip is also called an investment. A simple share certificate is an investment. A paper transactions used to be a, a worth used to be a crores. No, uh, what is it? Uh, those days it used to be the certificates. We do not know what is the value of a certificate unless it encashes, unless it is a realized. So now if you see the SEBI after 20 years or 25 years, there is a seal change in terms of its action, activities, investment, stakeholders. So maybe another, it may take another five years or 10 years for us to experience the robust, experience the complete impact of this implementation of this legislation, because it's, it's, it's a large, as I mentioned, the second largest industry in the India itself and involvement of various stakeholders, government, non-government, public, semi-public, 
agencies and investors many many uh, uh, face uh, faces are part of this uh, uh, industry so it takes some time for everybody to understand accommodate adjust to become a robust industry and robust governance and real delivery of the objective of the act so this is a fundamental please remember the accountability transparency professionalism information availability fast dispute re resolution and finally there is a good governance you can apply yourself if you are a customer of any other project or if you are builder of anything or if you are part of any of the real estate project in terms of uh, in in terms of achieving this objective just a small information uh, because i do not know how many how many uh, just can you put it in a chart how many practice in there are there are 62 participants here just i wanted to know uh, say yes or no how many you practice rera either by advising the clients either by issue a ca certificate or by any other manner you are involved in terms of uh, rera just put in a chart yes no yes no yes one raise and yes only one this shows how many members are also actively listening to my presentation yeah good yeah yes sixty three are there we are sixty three members i presume remaining of uh, are also practicing no okay good yes or no the question is how many of you are practicing in the area of rera how many of you by the end of this class i think all the nos will be converted into yes <laughs> <laughs> good it's only sir the the reason which i asked some question in between to say yes or no is only to uh, have a interaction with them and also to make them uh, active while listening otherwise we all know that right we will <laughs> move on to the other mode of uh, presentation other mode of our work yeah thank you thank you members so a statistics in kerala why i am saying is why i am showing the statistics is kerala is a 14 district it's 14 only right as of now we have about 14 districts in kerala about 751 real estate projects have been registered it's a good number a 751 even though uh, uh, it's not a great but still it's a good number of 751 numbers because 2022 2020 rera has started functioning in kerala where otherwise all other states it's all it's, it was about 2017 so two and a half hour, two and a half years of delay because rera had its own act when the kerala when the central government has uh, come but subsequently it has withdrawn its act and they followed the central government act itself 751 projects have registered trishur may be the uh, one of the uh, top 5 where projects in trishur is compared to trivandrum ernakulam maybe it may be a trishur itself there is no other other place which i had has more project compared to any other places after ernakulam or uh, tiruvananthapuram so Trishur also has a good number of projects, which I always hear from the my colleagues also. Reason which I'm trying to tell is you are the members of that place. You are part of this district. So absolutely nobody can else attend to this work, these services better than the better than what we are there in Trishur. There is an opportunity, please take it. Agents registered because uh, there is a mandate under the act real estate agents brokers channel partners realtors who market the real estate project who market the real estate project under rera mandatorily to be registered similarly the builder we call them as a promoter under the act promoter who engages anybody to market their project should be a rera registered agent only very small number in the Kerala, we have only 150 numbers, which is a very small in my view, because it should be at least a four digit number. In the state of Karnataka, we have about 5,000. 
project registered about 4000 agent registered okay so this is what is the uh, statistics of other places kerala is numbers in terms of maybe a state itself is a less and in terms of the real estate activities maybe uh, uh, restricted to only few places because it's a czr or uh, coastal region itself similarly there are complaints registered i was mentioning there is a inbuilt dispute resolution mechanism where i'm a customer or i'm a builder i'll go and file a complaint before the authority against a project stating that there may be a delay there may be a other issues a quality issues title issues or any other issues in the project will be will be here heard by this authority mean to say i need not to address my civil court i need not to choose the consumer uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, dispute resolution panel i can come to rera because rera being a specified to the industry is a industry uh, authority regulatory authority they can hear better they can understand better the outcome always should be a better there are about 1035 complaint which is registered before rera in kerala in all these things we have a role to play it is not only advocates are involved in complaints addressing or representing before the authority section 56 of the rera act given or empowers chartered accountant company secretary cwa and the advocate to represent before the authority before the adjudicating officer including the tribunal so we have also have a power to appear and we can represent it unfortunately or fortunately in the southern states our members representation is very less i can say nil anybody represent anybody represent say yes anybody represent for the complaint in kerala any members of our institute mean to say 100% 100% is in the hands of the advocates even i don't think uh, advocates of the sure itself are representing okay uh, uh, maybe because uh, the challenge is also the authority office is there in the uh, tiruvananthapuram for somebody to go there, it may be a, uh, somebody really, because it, it's all physical, unless it was a COVID earlier, it's a physical now. So uh, the reason there from one place to another place, uh, travel would be difficult, but still, even if it travel is also a worth traveling it, worth exploring, exposing to this act and the services. And in terms of other states, yes, is a similar situation, at least to the Southern states, but the moment we go to uh, Maharashtra, UP, Gujarat, there is a fair representation from our chartered accountant community because I interact across India who practice on the era. There are quite a number of chartered accountant actively chosen this as an area of practice. There are two ways to look into this. One is the compliance advisory. Second is the litigation. Litigation still we can, because as I mentioned, the moment we know what is the act and also related to the, uh, some of the uh, act which is related to the real estate, we also can represent well, better, equal to advocates. Sometimes maybe we can represent better than them because it's more of a business related, more of a numbers in many a time. So both should be proved because there is no interpretation here. It's, it's a factual thing. Whether building is there or not is a fact. Whether money spent or not is a fact. Unless in any other statute or and full stop comma was also be interpreted. There, there is nothing interpretation. It's a physical and factual facts of to be uh, uh, to be considered. Uh, Ajit sir, Mr. Suhel is available. I request uh, somebody to uh, make him as a host also. Yeah, good evening. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Vinay. I'm here. I've joined in. Yeah. But... Okay. Sorry, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got slightly delayed. That there was an urgent matter which came up in uh, Bombay High Court and I had to rush here. I just got over and then I'm joining. 
So um, thank you. Uh, we, we, we welcome once again, here. you sir. Uh, I, we Sorry? had uh, uh, as part of the branch, we had a welcome all, and we know that you are caught up with uh, lots of uh, these issues. We welcome you to this program. So we had asked uh, Vinay sir to just to start off, and uh, definitely we are eager uh, uh, in uh, eagerly waiting for your words also. You can step in. As, yes, yes, as yes. Like we'll be we'll be talking together. That's what oh, we yes. love, me and Vinay. So as he goes along, uh, I'll also um, um, join him in uh, the session. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. The floor is please, please, screen is yours. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Suhail, for joining. And uh, I was speaking about the background of it and some of the basics of uh, RERA and also Kerala RERA. Uh, I just wanted, Suhail, you to share about the implementation aspect of RERA in Kerala, even though it has come in 2017, where the uh, government has appointed the authority with effective from 1-1-2020. Subsequently, some of the notification they have issued and again they have withdrawn in terms of those notification. Maybe you can throw a little light on that in the interest of the members about yes. this. So, um, as we know, um, Kerala, the implementation of RERA got slightly delayed because of the uh, act which was passed by the state, which is also the case in case of Bengal also. We had the WB Hira. So um, the act came to be implemented subsequently, that is in 2020. So when the authority was constituted, of course, the projects uh, between 1 5 2017 to 1 1 2020, the authority issued um, circulars to say that these pro projects which were, which had already received completion certificates or occupancy certificates as of 31-12-2019, those projects are deemed to be exempted. But however, that is not the right thing. And uh, after the um, Honorable Supreme Court passed an order in, uh, uh, in November of 2021, so Kerala RERA again went back and withdrew those circulars which exempted the projects which were ongoing that is the projects which are ongoing and have been completed between 1-5-2017 to 31-12-2021. So effectively, the implementation of RERA now in Kerala goes back to 1-5-2017. So all the provisions which are applicable in respect of the act for, the, for such projects which were ongoing or which are new, which have been completed during this period, uh, RERA becomes applicable which means that the allottees in such projects get a right to go against the promoter or do anything uh, to enforce their rights in respect of those projects under RERA. So they get a right to do that. And uh, the authority has now clarified and withdrawn those circulars which exempted the projects. So essentially, even those projects which were earlier exempted by virtue of these circulars uh, are now required to be registered and most of them are being registered. However, I think they are being registered as completed projects and not as ongoing projects if these projects have obtained the occupancy certificate. So for the purpose of commencement of RERA in Kerala, now the date that needs to be reckoned is 1-5-2017 and not 1-1-2020. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Suhail, for bringing that clarity. Because it goes back to 115-2017, not from 11-2020. Yes. And I'll touch up on few of the latest updates uh, before I get into the various professional opportunities and how professional play an important role under there. So one is about the latest update is in terms of the annual audit filing. Uh, friends, we all know that section uh, 42 LD proviso 3 mandates the promoter to file the annual audit within uh, six months from the end of the financial year. But in the state of Kerala, as per the rules, it is seven months, that is 31st October 2021. Because of the COVID, they have extended this date for 31st December 2021. Further authority has been given uh, a further extension for 31st March 2022 because we all know that most of the statutes, most of the statutes have uh, uh, given an extension because of the COVID, whether it's income tax or GST or any other act. Similarly, this authority also has extended the filing of accounts under 
their annual audit report under data by the, till 31st March 2022. This means to say that projects which have shown about 750 projects which are registered prior to RERA, all those projects should have filed the annual audit report under RERA. And if you have filed it, it's okay. If you are not filed, please go back and communicate this to the clients and to file this uh, annual audit under RERA in Form 5. And also there are some of the mandatory document for the authority to issue the registration. Registration were notified earlier and also as per uh, section four of the act and also rule three, some of the documents which are very much essential, very much important. However, initially authority was okay to grant a registration without insisting on this particular document now authority felt it is a high time and it is a requirement, uh, mandatory requirement even under the act. In case of a land belongs to somebody, the JDA joint development agreement is a mandatory and also it should be registered. I, 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 I hear from the Kerala, most of the time JDA is not registered because of the impact of the stamp duty. So, in this way, in this, uh, with this notification, authority is very clear that that document requirement of a registration, registered JDA in case of land belongs to others, in case of a JDA project, it was registered. So, uh, uh, Suhail, you wanted to add anything to this in terms of the mandatory, why it is mandated, why earlier authority was okay to uh, consider the unregistered JDA also. So here you are, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Vinay. Um, what was the uh, point? Question is you? like, now as part of the registration, uh, uh, authority has issued a circular stating that registered JDA is a mandatory. Huh. So, um, of course, uh, uh, if you strictly speaking, um, legally, the registration act does not require a joint development agreement to be registered. However, what is important is the payment of the stamp duty on that document as per the um, stamp act of the particular state. So in this case in Kerala, the uh, stamp duty that is applicable or payable on the joint development agreement and the general power of attorney that gets simultaneously executed along with the joint development agreement, that has to be paid. And uh, we have seen that uh, um, Many documents under many nomenclatures have been executed earlier in uh, in those projects. So what happens is, in case of a dispute, um, I have I have recently come across a dispute where the project is being developed under a memorandum of understanding between the landowner and the promoter. The promoter has completed the construction of the project. Now the landowner is not coming forward to execute the sale deeds because there is some dispute between the landowner and the promoter and uh, in which the allottees are not suffering because the allottees are not able to get their sale deed. So in such cases, what happens is it becomes impossible to enforce that memorandum of understanding. So it is important that um, as allottees and as professionals, um, if you are looking at a project, you make sure that if nothing, the stamp duty on the document is paid. It's a, it's a document which is duly stamped and duly registered. So that enforcement at any point of time between either um, in case of a dispute between the landowner or the um, promoter, wherein if you have purchased an apartment, let's say if it's an area sharing uh, joint development agreement, if you have purchased either under the landowner or under the promoter, then the uh, um, enforcement of the contracts which have been executed in favor of the allottees could be enforced and the um, promoter or the landowner could be made to do what they're supposed to do. And of course, with the issue of this circular, now it becomes mandatory. I'm sure at the, the authority at the initial stage, uh, for some time it insisted on registration, but because the sheer number of unregistered documents or the projects which are being developed under unregistered documents in Kerala. I, and let me tell you, this is unique to Kerala because no other state follows this other than uh, Kerala and to a certain extent in Tamil Nadu, this is followed.
but otherwise all states without their the joint development agreement being registered no projects uh, goes forward in uh, karnataka also where we practice extensively it's a mandate that the the joint development agreement and the general power of attorney is registered otherwise the development doesn't happen so also is the case in telangana andhra and all other states but um, uniquely to kerala and uh, uh, tamil nadu of course kerala we have a huge array of uh, documents that are being executed um, we have we have seen sale deeds of undivided share and uh, so many ways to overcome the um, or uh, to to get over the payment of the stamp duty so many ways and methods of course i think with this circular that um, gets uh, there's there'll be a full stop to all of that and the stamp duty will be paid and the joint development agreement will be now registered as professionals i would um, request or i would ask you to look into the document and make sure that if nothing the stamp duty is as per the kerala stamp act is paid uh, so that the documents become valid and uh, a power of attorney under the registration act requires authentication for it to be valid so which means that the authentication is nothing but the registration process so if not the joint development agreement at least the general power of attorney which is executed uh, simultaneously along with the joint development agreement that would require mandatorily regist- to be registered so we have to now make sure that in kerala particularly all these documents are registered otherwise um, one the project will not uh, get registration and two the allottees or the promoter will be put to uh, the allottees the promoter as well as the land owner will be put to inconvenience if any dispute arises between any of the parties yes vinay yeah thank you so fundamentally it is a registered jda for anybody to uh, hold them responsible especially the land owners at subsequent uh event uh, where there is a difference of opinion between the builder and the developer somebody has uh, uh, posted a question on gst i have replied to them in case still they have any uh, clarification i can take up they can put it in a q and a session next is in terms of some of the defaulter list basically it is not a defaulter list uh, initially when rera started in kerala they started collecting the documentation manually because the application was not ready it is one of the duty of the authority to enable the online application module a software to receive the application and also process it and uh, uh, for for the information of the members uh, this is a one one of the act which mandates the operationalization of a website by the authority itself i do not see this provision or a class in any other act they say that the way and uh, uh, method they manage their administration or maybe the registration they used to mention it but is act specifically mention the authority to operationalize a website that means to say now act is also matured where they clearly mention that what how what is the process of are uh, uh, receiving the application disposal of the application so with that mandate authority initially they have received they used to receive the manual application subsequently it is digitized and the application is a very robust application which kerala has implemented because it it is borrowed from the maharashtra era maharashtra is a fairly settled uh, in terms of the website and also related to the ra so kerala has finalized the website uh, or the model of the maharashtra it's a robust one and full proof and subsequently having implemented this website they invited every manually filed applicants to file in physical as so online mode and most of the people have filed except this 17 which is the latest of 23 52022 initially it about 200 300 now it is only 17 i am sure that authority will reach out them and also complete the process of this also why i am showing to this is like any of your client is there in this list where they have not filed their physical having filed the physical application if they have not filed online application please inform them to file this application online one more thing is also ongoing project which is already uh, suhel has mentioned 
uh, ongoing project which goes back as an 152017 and not withstanding the uh, implementation of rera from 112020 because authority when they have uh, taken their uh, uh, once they having appointed when they started functional functional uh, functioning and also uh, receiving the application they are of the opinion any of projects are completed Before, as on one one two thousand twenty, what is for me to collect those application, grant the registration, having completed the project because they have delayed for about two and a half years of their implementation or functioning. Why should I insist of the world? But because Supreme Court has come out heavily, because this is effective from one five two thousand seventeen, it is okay. It is okay. You have come now, but you grant a registration to those project in as completed project also. so the reason is under rera there are multiple aspects to be considered it is not just it is a completed i'm sure that somebody will post one important one interesting question when the post i'll answer to that that is a question which will be there in every session across india i will tell what is that question unless if somebody don't post it i will ask i'll tell the i'll raise the question myself and answer to that so 152017 the project which have not received the completion certificate as an 152017 all those projects required to be registered under rera so this is the april 2022 they have issued a notice public notice by withdrawing the earlier notification they have given so with this from 152017 the projects which are not received not received the completion certificate mandatorily to register with rera so yeah, what is the take away to, of this just just to just to add to that um by virtue of uh, the this order and uh, the other orders which are passed by other high courts uh, particularly allahabad high court um which says that unless and also uh, the bombay high court in one in macrotech uh, developers um what is uh, happened is that um kerala rera as such was entertaining complaints in respect of all projects whether they were registered under rera or not so with these judgments and uh, with particularly um, the law kind of maturing in respect of which projects uh, which are the projects in in respect of which the uh, um um what do you say um the complaints can be filed okay. so only those projects which uh, um which are registered under rera the complaints can be filed so that is why it also becomes mandatory that in order to protect the rights of the allottees or uh, to define which are the projects uh, in respect of which the complaints can be filed so it is only in respect of those complaints um, those projects where the project is registered that the uh, allottee can file a complaint or proceed against the promoter okay thank you yeah. suhel there is a question you can answer to that in chat yeah so uh, next is in terms of the extension application friends section 6 Suppose of the project is to be started on a land which is agreed to be sold and there is a registered sale agreement um suppose the project is to be started on a land which is agreed to be sold and there is no jd is not required so if uh, i don't know what is the uh, so here the question uh, is instead of jda they have a sale agreement other no, there is just Builders so then to define to define the terms of the joint development agreement a joint development agreement would be required so um i don't think a sale agreement that is that was the procedure that was being followed that undivided share is sold under the sale agreement agreed to be sold so i don't think it will define the uh, way in which the project is going to be developed so it is advisable that a joint development agreement is executed yeah thank you so this slide and this this uh, screen which i'm showing is in relation to the section 6 the extension of the project friends you all know that any any projects require a start date and a end date if you are a customer or if you are a builder while we enter into an agreement we say that this project would be end by so and so 24 months with the 6 months of the grace period and it surprised to us when we visited kerala when we started looking at the kerala projects in southern india kerala number of project which are struck undelivered 
is far, far higher than any other place, which is there for 12 years, 13 years, 15 years of the project. Still, it is not started their project development and they collected the huge money from the customer. Of course, these monies are paid by the people who are sitting abroad. So that may be the one of the reason there is a, so much of delay in terms of completion and delivery of a project to the customers or allottees in the project. So what is there in this uh, RERA is while filing the application, we give from this date, we'll start the project. This date, I'll complete the project. Is it fair? Yes, it is fair because somebody require uh, a, a commitment or a confirmation by when it would be completed. In the same manner, you report this to the authority itself in terms of the by when you will complete the project. So by with, with that, it's a regulatory mechanism. With that, there is a sanctity for this end date or a completion date when the, applic when the applications are filled when the form B, that's the affidavit under the act is given within which I'll complete the project. If the project is not completed, then nothing will happen. They have to file an application before the RERA authority stating that I have not completed the project. I need some extension. How much extension is permitted under RERA? Maximum one year. So 24 months, it was earlier time which I have given. Another 12 months authority can permit them to continue to complete the, continue to develop and complete the project so that it would be delivered to the allottees in the project. By virtue of section six, 12 months is permitted, but this notification was issued uh, to give a clarity in case a project is still not completed even after 12 months, what would happen? So, so what is the uh, guidelines for them? Then generally section eight would be invoked by the authority, but in the state of Kerala, they have, if you read that, uh, read this notification, it says that project is almost completed or, in, or at the final stage of the completion and instead of invoking section eight, you please continue to file an application similar to section six, authority will consider that and do the needful of uh, uh, issuing necessary orders for them to complete the project. So guidelines were issued earlier because of some of the continue to asking the clarification in the month of April. So authority has given the public notice. So this is also in terms of the public notice uh, where there is a interest and uh, uh, interest and other compensation in the case of new tech promoters and developers private limited state of UP where uh, it was used to be come as hearing before the adjudicating officer by virtue of this order and where they defined what is the authority role? What is the adjudication, adjudicating officer role? By virtue of that, the authority has the right to hear or maybe uh, res right and responsible to hear the complaint. Only the uh, uh, um, adjudicating officer has a right to adjudge the compensation and maybe uh, uh, the refund cases. So here refund is who is having a power to issue refund, authority or the adjudicating officer? Um. Now, by virtue of the very same uh, judgment, that is the new tech uh, promoters and developers judgment uh, rendered by the Honorable Supreme Court, the division in terms of which relief can be granted by whom is interpreted. And uh, in case of only in case of award of compensation, can the complaint be filed before the adjudicating officer? Rest all the complaints have to be filed before the authority now. So in effect, in order for refund, an or, uh, an complaint seeking refund of money, a complaint seeking delay a penalty by way of interest. So all those complaints will have to be filed and heard by the authority. And only if there is a complaint filed seeking for compensation, that will be now heard by the adjudicating officer. So this is the differentiation that has happened by virtue of uh, the new tech judgment. Yes, of course, it is in, It is only the interpretation of the act. This is how the act uh, has been enacted. But um, earlier, the adjudicating officer was hearing all the complaints that were filed under section 31, including uh, refund, penalty, interest, all of them. But uh, now that has, uh, the authority now takes, uh, uh, the authorities now has to hear 
almost all the complaints have necessarily go before the authority except those cases where compensation is being sought for but there are very far and few cases uh, wherein you seek for compensation but most of the cases most of the complaints will be for uh, a delay penal delay by way of penalty of for delay by way of interest and other things so that is uh, essentially the authority hears most of the complaints i think 80 to 90% of the complaints will now be heard by the authority yes sir yeah thank you uh in terms of the uh, details which are all part of the registration itself in order to streamlining the projects in terms of where there is a uh, uh, plots plot and the on which they were developing the villas they had given the certificate for villa project and also only details of the development permit will be recorded in the registration certificate and this is because in case of the projects which are, uh, are where um, okay so basically where there is villas are developed in those villas wherein uh, uh, not developed together they develop in bits and pieces or stages proper marking of those villas which is under development should be marked while filing the application and uh, 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 it should be clearly marked mark d mark or shaded in a different color for the purpose of authority to no which is the uh, villa which is under development it is more of a procedural aspect as i mentioned that this is a ongoing project which is to be registered and uh, uh, which have taken out taken back this circular and effective 152017 whatever be the project which are not received the completion certificate mandatorily to register yeah this is same thing this order which i have shown you because of they also mentioned the same because of the honorable supreme court in case of new tech promoters developers this is a copy of it this is the latest developments or the recent circulars notifications which are issued by the authority in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of functioning and also some of the uh, um, procedural aspects and some of the uh, differences or challenges which are faced by the promoters as well as the um, uh, stakeholders vinay uh, the uh, the slide uh, is regarding professional references in the act section 42 ld okay yeah i am here because no, no. this is yeah the, the slide relates to the references of uh, the professionals anyhow okay carry on just wanted now we are in this slide only only because okay, okay. this only i have passing reference now i am okay. touching upon this professional references only now so help okay 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 yeah so uh, uh, suhel can you start with these professional references um okay so um section 4 deals with the registration of a real estate project under the act um which are mandated to be registered um of course there are certain criteria um one is the um projects which are ongoing as we discussed uh, as on the date of the commencement of the act all ongoing projects and um, also the other requirement is that any any real estate project which is being developed on a land which measures 500 square meters that is if it is more than 500 square meters then it uh, the land the project land is more than 500 square meters then such a project has to be registered 500 square meters in terms of uh, square feet is 5382 square feet or if the building that is being constructed if it is a, if it is a either a commercial building or a residential building where there are more than 8 units then such projects become mandatory uh, are required to be mandatorily registered under the act so section 4 mandates the documents that are to be filed for the registration and also in the provisos to section 42 lc and ld certain requirements are prescribed under the act which are mandatory the first requirement is the 
deposit of 70% of the amounts realized for the real estate project into a designated project bank account. And once the money is deposited, the money has to be used for the purpose of the development work of the project. So if any withdrawal has to happen from this designated project bank account, the withdrawal has to happen in proportion to the percentage of completion of the project. So now how do we determine the per proportion of the percentage of completion of project? So that is where the professionals come in. For every withdrawal or for any withdrawal to take place from the designated project, the designated bank account, three certificates are required. One is an engineer, an architect, and a chartered accountant in practice. So once these three professionals certify that the work has been completed, the of course the engineer um, certifies the amount of money that has been spent on the project. The architect certifies the percentage of completion and the chartered accountant based on the expenses incurred then finally certifies what is the money that has that can be withdrawn if any money has been deposited into the designated bank account. So it be, these three professionals play a very vital role and subsequently every RERA registered project within six months from the end of the financial year, that is before 39 to 30th September of every year, if a project is let's say ongoing for three or four years. So every year a RERA audit has to be done and that audit has to be filed on the website, on the portal of the authority. So that also has to be done by a chartered accountant. Of course, the chartered accountant who is issuing the certificate and the chartered accountant who conducts the audit have to be two different uh, chartered accountants as I understand. So in case of a real estate project, these three, pro these three professionals play a very vital role. Of course, the chartered accountants playing the more important role in terms of uh, also certifying the money that can be withdrawn and also carrying out the audit of the project. Yes, Vinay. Thank you, Sudhir. Uh, yeah. So friends, this is a very important. This is a slide which gives the whitage reference of a professionals throughout the act. There is no other uh, 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 sections where there is a reference in a, apart just, from in section 56. Just, just a minute, uh, Vinay. In addition to this, uh, um, the chartered accountants and company secretaries are now entitled to appear before the authority and the real estate appellate tribunal. So which means that um, they also step into the shoes of an advocate and they can plead on behalf of a client, uh, both before the uh, authority as well as the appellate tribunal. And uh, we have seen across India that many chartered accountants have started appearing before the appellate uh, tribunal as well as the authority. So now um, um, the chartered accountants and company secretaries, and of course, uh, this has also been uh, confirmed by a judgment uh, by the Rajasthan High Court that chartered accountants can appear um, before these forums. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very important, the more you read, the more you get in this. It's only about the four paragraphs, entire act revolve under this four, four paragraph. As we all know, men, machinery, material uh, is goes through a process called money. So without that, nothing will move. Without money, men, material, machinery will not move. So the money is a one mechanism, one thread, which pass through all this chain and ultimately make them to move. So similarly, this act has given much importance in terms of the financial management, in terms of how the money to be collected, how the money to be real uh, uh, deposited, and how to re how to withdraw the money from the project bank account. Friends, have you ever imagined or you ever thought that government will regulate the collection, deposit, and withdraw of money for their project? Have you seen any other industry like this? Have you seen any other industry where government regulate the money, customers' money? Except in case of a banking industry, 
except in case of a, uh, where there is a NBFC or if it is a cheat or maybe a microfinance. Have you experienced in any other industry where they regulate the power money which the customer's money? This is the act. This is the act where the money collected is regulated by the government or through a authority. That means to say that we as a chartered accountants should be careful, double careful in terms of whether this compliance is met perfectly or 100%. As we mentioned that this is a public money. It's a public money which is equal to any other deposits in a bank and how this utilization of this money is happening, whether the utilization of money is in line with or in compliance with the act or the statute. So we as a chartered accountant has a major and higher role and uh, under the act where based on my certificate, based on my chartered accountant certificate, promoter is allowed to withdraw his money that means to say that like we have a right, we have something in to say in this act without my certificate, even you cannot touch your money, which is even though which is lying in a bank account. So to that extent, we have given a power and that power comes with the responsibility. Please ensure exercising this responsibility or right should be in terms of what is provided in the act. So let us look at that. Let us spend about five, 10 minutes on this simple slide because the entire act revolve around this slide only. And if I understand, if I if I able to appreciate this, then it's easy for the members and the professionals to render the services, advice to their clients easily and in a better manner. Because the moment you say this, nobody agree. At least as a professional, will we agree that? First question, how many have you listened from your real estate customer? Sir, why I should depart this money, sir? And why should I get this certificate to withdraw this, sir? At least initially, there is a lot of reluctant, lot of uh, hesitation, lot of like uh, something, which is the questions from the various builders. So various builders are the promoters. So same answer is the same because this is the act and the statute which mandated to collect, deposit, withdraw only on certain conditions. First uh, is first collect the money of which 70% should go to the designated bank account. Where is a designated bank account? Which should be opened in the nationalized bank and that bank account should be given at the time of RERA registration. This is called designated bank account of this project. There is no other project, other bank account other than this account for which minimum 70% should go into the that bank account. Say 10 lakh rupees money collected from the customers, 7 lakhs should go to this project designated account only. 30% is free and 70% should go to that bank account. So as a customer, as a chartered accountant, while I issue a certificate either under section 42LD for the purpose of withdrawal of money or for the purpose of annual audit under rule of proviso 3, I should ensure what is the money collected from the allottees from time to time whether this money has been deposited 70% into this account. If not, please qualify the amount, qualify, qualify in the report. Say 10 lakhs collected, only 6 lakhs deposited, 4 lakhs is the taken a cash or deposited in some other account, then there is a shortfall of 1 lakh rupees. Please report here. So that is the first thing we should see that you collect, take the collection register and the, the corresponding deposit into designated bank account. Now collection is done, deposit is done. This is perfect, they deposited minimum 70%. Now, having deposited this 70%, it should be withdraw, right? For the purpose of what? That 70% money should be withdraw for the purpose of only that project. As, as again, I'm telling you, the intention of the act is to protect the public money, the customer money, because I paid, you paid, somebody paid for the purpose of this project. And that project should be completed with this money. So the intention is not to take this money, put it somewhere. So the money of 70% should go to this project only. It is not to the next project, which is, is doing it. Not to the previous project is started sometime back that is stuck only for this project. If you are not spending money this, for this project, let the money be in this bank account only. Whenever you spent, 
you come back stating that i have spent money i will withdraw it it is not that the you will be withdrawing and spending it is you spend first then withdraw it it is a reimbursement model so who will verify and who will issue a certificate that he has spent or incurred it is again a engineer architect and a chartered accountant all the three will issue a certificate as per proviso 3 proviso 3 proviso 2 stating that project is completed certain percentage and based on that i calculate what is the eligibility to withdraw the money from the project bank account now you withdraw it so we as a professional should ensure that what is the eligibility to withdraw who will issue a certificate for eligibility to withdraw chartered accountant is the ultimate authority to quantify it mention the absolute value of the money which is eligible to withdraw before that there is an engineer and the architect so the architect and the engineer calculate and issue a certificate of what is the percentage of completion of the project so you may have how architect will value it architect will not value the project complete uh, money which has gone in he goes to a project he verify physical construction of a project he assign some weightages to each activity like excavation completion 5% like a basement completion 5% like a basement 2 completion 5% ground floor second floor third floor completion another 15% walls are completed 5% tiles roof paint completed 8% grill or sanitary or uh, plumbing work completed 3% electrical 5% where there is a common amenities in the project give it to 5% club house 8% he will assign some weightages to each activity in a project and arrive at what is a percentage of completion in the project say say that 82% of the project is completed in respect of the physical development he doesn't give it is 32 crore rupees of uh, pro, uh, work is completed he only gives what is a percentage of completion based on the weightage he assign at the time of issuance of certificate so that means to say architect should understand assign the weightage based on the scheme of the project when he should do prepare this he should prepare at the initial stage itself while discussing with the uh, promoter of the project understand what is the extent of development what is the scheme of the project how the development will happen in case of a multiple towers will the multiple towers would be constructed together or only i'll construct the first tower then i'll go to the second tower if so how much percentage should i should assign this to the only one tower and this not the second tower so architect will assign this actual uh, um, percentages weightages to each of the activity in a project and he issue the certificate from time to time open the architect certificate you will understand how much percentage of each activity which is uh, he certify it that is the first one second we have a engineer you may have a question sir why architect why engineer why one should one uh, both should not be the same the answer is they are also professionals they are also professionals they do their duty of physical measurement of the percentage of completion and the engineer will value the total cost of that construction so what is the role of an engineer engineer goes to a site and value the cost of the construction of the project say initially they have given 100 crore as a project cost of which 42 crore rupees towards the land and 58 crores towards the development that is a physical development of the project and out of 50 crore rupees maybe there is a we know that boq bill of quantity versus the rate multiplied with the boq and rate arrive at the value what is the value he will assign this against the boq what work completed arrive at the value of the completion arrive at the value of that project and he issue a certificate to an extent of the cost of the development cost of the construction what is the on site cost at the building so we have a architect to give measurement of what is the percentage of completion that is a physical measurement and the engineer value what is the value of that construction and arrive what what is the value of it then why do we we need a ca answer is why do we need a ca already engineer is giving some value to it can't i use that certificate and withdraw the money the answer is no 
what is the engineer is giving engineer is giving valuation of that building valuation of that facility only but there is other cost which is involved in terms of the project which may be approval cost which is incurred already which is part of your books of account that may not be known by engineer there is a consultation fees there is a management fees there is a uh, architect fees there is a engineer fees there is a borrowing for there is a borrowing cost there is administration cost all these cost is where is that available where is that available friends available in the books of accounts if at all if the books of accounts are maintained what is your experience in terms of maintenance of books of accounts friends by this industry how often they maintain the books of accounts at least post gst they maintain purchase and sales before that unless the industry is a fair matured and a, and there is a uh, discipline business models business houses they maintain otherwise small and medium they comes once in a year look at this is the receipts this is the payments let's book the let's start looking at the books of accounts now with this there is a books of accounts which is mandatory because as a chartered accountant what is the basis for me to issue a certificate based on the books of accounts maintained by the promoter of the project i will look into the promo expenses which is incurred as per the books of accounts finally i arrive at what is the money which is incurred in the project also i will see money collected from the project money collected in the project and i'll put it in a format which is notified by the authority and i will allow the promoter to withdraw this much of money from the project bank account based on the development work which is carried out so do we think do you think there is a matching of all the three professional information what is your experience will all the profession should match the details is, is is something which is to be same across all the uh, mem all the uh, professionals yes sir no the question is does all three professionals certificate should match yes or no no i think the participants are not enable to reply you may not get hmm? okay so the Does all the professional be, values match in their certificate they may not be enabled to speak so perhaps you might get put it in the comments. chat only yeah yeah ajit sir says yes any other view of course other view maybe no only there is no other view yes sir no the may not be meera madam says may not be any other view okay answer to this is as i mentioned each of us has a different role to play authority if we see any of the any of the project where all the values of the three certificates are matching immediately he'll pick up stating that this is a fake certificate somebody must have done uh, uh, somebody has issued the certificate without looking into it it will never match it should not match also as i told you each of us has a role to play engineer will give only to an extent of construction for that as a chartered accountant i add administration cost other cost and interest cost if at all there is a borrowing so construction plus other cost on site cost off site cost is something total cost which comes from the ca only so if you come across any certificate which is matching sir then either of the professional has compromised in in uh, delivering their duty while issuing the certificate that is the first thing to look at generally ca certificate would be on a higher side because he consider the books of accounts also while issuing the certificate so what we have seen now is how do we collect having collected where to deposit how to how much to deposit 70% to deposit having deposit how they will withdraw 
they withdraw based on the percentage proportionate of the project completion and who issue this proportionate completion it's the architect architect percentage is the utmost important if you refer to your chartered accountant your certificate also architect certificate is the percentage to decide to withdraw the money that percentage multiplied by the estimated cost will come to the amount will the amount eligible to withdraw and that money can be withdrawn from the project designated bank account and this certificate should be issued by a chartered accountant who is holding certificate of practice not a employee of the promoter is always holding a certificate of practice who should issue this certificate number 1 one more certificate under the act is in terms of the accounts under audit under pera audit accounts of the project should be audited and should be reported under rera on this aspect how do we do the audit itself i take one day session a session required to be uh, 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 required for the professionals how do we audit what do you mean by audit under rera because the word which is mentioned is incurred in rera the word which is mentioned is incurred what is the accounting definition of an incurred do you have any definition to an incurred what we know is accrued paid or accrued is only a two terminologies as a chartered accountant as an accounting professional i know but what is this incurred is a new concept anybody can throw a light on this incurred so this is what is important now under rera what is mentioned is a incurred it's a new new word which is a new uh, definition which is defined under rera only act under rera only the incurred includes paid payable advance payment for any of the materials also or any of the uh, obligation of the promoter which is already crystallized liability is called incurred mera madam as also as asking a question whether the money spent on unfinished stock of material can also be included in the money utilized for the project very much true madam the stock which is lying in a project either at the go down or at the site should be considered as incurred only or you paid advance for the purpose of purchasing a lift even the advance should be considered as incurred for the purpose of withdrawal of the money interest payable to the bank is also something called incurred so for the purpose of rera the accounting or the way that we prepare the certificate should have a backup and a reconciliation between your books of accounts and the rera certificate because there you follow the accrual system in rera we follow the incurred system so incurred is a very different way of uh, different terminology itself and it varies from the project to project which may be including the paid payable and also advance paid or any of the liabilities or obligation of the promoter promoter which is uh, uh, which is uh, a part of it sorry sorry ragu sir uh, because your name showing as meera so I have thought it is meera otherwise ragu mohan sorry sir sorry sorry to okay wrong spelling of your name okay so this is what is important the incurred is very important it plays a very important role in case of a large project because the way that money is collected the money way that incurred with the way they uh, we allow to withdraw the project is always a difficult and a challenge we have seen the large projects they collect a huge money say when they launch it they collect about 100 crore rupees on the launch itself and whether they are allowed to withdraw 100 crores we have to really look at what is incurred if you go back and look at the books of account there is no no money which has been recognized as an expenses but under rera if you if you practice if you uh, check uh, clearly and the incurred concept has been introduce for them to withdraw the money for the purpose of project development so this is very important if the money is incurred with the certificate i can withdraw it 
So what happens? Withdrawn. What is the next? What we have seen? We have seen collection. We have seen deposit and eligibility of withdrawal and the withdrawal. What do I do having withdrawn it? What is the what is the next step? Having withdrawn, what do I do? It is not to be used for any other purpose. Okay. Will you remember? Have you remember this money having withdrawn should be used only for that project. There should not be any diversion. As Raghu sir mentioned, interest payable to bank is part of my incurred. And having having withdrawn the project uh, money. I should settle this interest payable to the bank. Not that I take this money and go into some, some other project. So very important, many of the professionals are failing to check end use of this money having withdrawn. They stopped at the place of allowing them to withdraw. We should go to a next level, whether having withdrawn, it has been utilized specifically to the project. So how do I see? Look at their books of accounts. Prepare a cash flow. Having withdrawn from the bank account, where is this money has been gone? How the payment has been made? You should mention the cash flow statement, which clearly says the receipt and the payment. Receipts and payment shows, give an idea whether this money has been utilized for the project. That is what is important. And it's utmost important for the chartered accountant to certify Chartered accountant to understand the concept of this incurred and having incurred utilization for the project while issuing the certificate. Friends, we have seen various projects which are struck. Kerala is not an exception. There is a long and huge delay in terms of completion of the project where money has been collected from the customers long back. Majority of the majority of the money has collected. Second, there is a loan also borrowed. Third, if you see there is vendor's payments are not made, supplier payments are due, income tax due, GST due, VAT due, then where is the money? This is one of the experience you might experience in this industry. Generally, any other, any other industry, if you take manufacturing, you need a three working capital. One, you have to pay advance to your suppliers. One, you should have work in progress material. Another, you should have finished goods. Fourth, working capital you require for the receivables, debtors at the market. You need a four working capital if you are a manufacturing industry. If you are a real estate industry, you will have four payables. Borrowing, customer advances, vendors payable, government levies payable. So unless we verify it, the money which is incurred, money withdrawn and utilized for the project, one cannot issue the certificate confidently, which is required under the act as a mandate to verify and issue the certificate. This is a well, uh, big picture of the uh, professional involvement and the professional certification. And finally, the audit, as I mentioned, form, uh, uh, I think form five may be the audit uh, format in the state of Kerala. So it should be issued annually. While we issuing the certificate, ensure that reconciliation between other financial statements is made because the certificate which we are issuing under RERA is a public document. Your GST officer, your income tax officer or somebody else will easily take up and match that with your GST returns. For the purpose of withdrawal, I give 80% completion under RERA. If I give more percentage, my ability to withdraw is more. If I give lesser percentage, my ability to withdraw is less. What will give it to GST? What we give it to income tax? If I give more percentage, my tax liability is more. I have to recognize more revenue. If I show more for GST percentage completion, my GST liability is more. So there is a gap between RERA and other statute. And percentage of completion should not be different for different statute. It should be a same. We have seen the cases, 53% were given for the purpose of GST, 90% is given for the purpose of RERA to withdraw the project, withdraw the money from the project. So there is a huge difference between this statute. 
then the authorities will, will hold you to the question how this is possible and why the, the taxes or interest or the penalty should not be levied for the wrong no uh, uh, wrong reporting of information both cannot be same sir both cannot be different in terms of the percentage of completion at least percentage of completion in terms of uh, rera is more accurate compared to any other statute because rera has a inbuilt mechanism of bringing the professional is on the board and also this information is is like uh, uh, um, flow throughout the project from the inception to the end in a robust manner in a free manner and the rera percentage of completion plays a very vital role and this percentage of completion is publicly available any statutory agency statutory authority can look into that so keeping that in the mind professionals friends to consider any other statute reporting of it any questions on the financial aspect because we will be more interested about this portion and if you have any specific questions please put it in the chat we'll take up that this already i have explained to you 100% money out of it 30 and 70 to be taken care so this is a certificate form number 1 form 2 3 4 which is notified by the uh, department in terms of the various certificates which is available in the website one can download and see that form number 5 is annual report which i already have discussed with you annual accounts so one more is there chartered accountant certifying the progress that is a quarterly certificate and the annual certificate should be a different chartered accountant entity other than a chartered accountant who is the statutory auditor and completion there is a form which is notified where charter architect should issue a completion certificate you remember percentages should be given by an architect architect will issue a certificate stating 100% 100% 100% in each activity excavation 100% roof 100% paint 100% electrical 100% lift 100% facilities 100% sanitation 100% the moment all 100% is completed then the form number 6 will comes into picture it will issue certify that project is completed 100% in all aspect and one more thing is which in part of the regulation authority is clearly mentioned should not be changed without intimation to the authority the chartered accountants whom names are provided at the time of registration go to the website of the rera ajit sir has already mentioned that all the information is there in the kerala website go to the website of a kerala there is a professional details of chartered accountant architect engineer these professionals should not be changed without intimation to the authority it's a good good aspects is a good practice even the professionals also protected under the act one more thing authority says that in case authority found that the information which is false or incorrect information authority is empowered to refer this to the institute uh, to take the necessary penal action whether is architect chartered accountant or engineer maybe they have written to the our institute also about not issuing the certificate the manner and the way it is required under the act some of the change in business uh, suhel i want you to take up this uh, what is the change in the uh, business post era practices suhel are you there yeah yeah i'm here uh, yeah. um so um before the act came into force um of course we know real estate industry as such is uh, plagued with uh, many irregularities and uh, we know uh, not only as professionals but at the end of it we also are a lot is in some of the other project and uh, we have also suffered at the hands of uh, the promoters some of whom uh, are uh, do not rather uh, adhere to the promises that they make and deliver what they what is supposed to be delivered so before rera absolutely there was no regulation governing the real estate industry of course uh, many of the states has the um, karnataka i mean the apartment owners act as well as the ownership flat regulation management and sale and transfer act uh, which were in most of the states these were enacted way back in 1970s itself 
uh, however they were not there was no regulatory body or regulatory mechanism under those acts now with the coming of rera what would happen um, much much later uh, happens uh, is there some issue with that uh, connection Uh, Vinay sir, I think uh, Sohil sir has just logged out or something, some issue with the connection or something. What happened? Yeah, I think yeah, we lost uh, Sohil sir. Uh, he has oh, oh, oh. Or something. Just a second. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. See, post era practices, I just wanted to, I don't know uh, how many things which he has mentioned. So project registration is something is a must. It is a prior registration of a project. Mean to say that before somebody launch, before somebody collect a money, before somebody market it, before somebody go to the uh, uh, sales, they should register the project before the authority. What is earlier practice? Earlier, whether we got a plan approval, no plan approval, we used to sell, we used to collect the money and we used to take ages to do some other plan approvals, CZR approvals, or various statutory approvals, then only I can start the project. Now, nothing doing, ensure you have every approvals in your hand, then come to RERA, register the project with RERA, then go to market, collect even single rupee. Mean to say that the working capital required for somebody till the project launch is between 12 to 18 months for a small project, for a bigger project, maybe two years to five years, depends on the scale of a project. Till that point of time, the industry, the builder should be able to sustain. It is like any other project. Have you seen any project which sold before it is approved by any other agency? The answer is no. Similarly, the same thing which is brought into this industry. Advertisement, there is a guidelines for issuance of advertisement. We all know that how these advertisements made by this industry. Have you seen the advertisements? We all seen the advertisements, right? Looking at what is the advertisement of brochures, material, and what is the reality. So there is a lot of restrictions which is brought into the advertisement. Veracity of the advertisement as per section 12 is also mentioned. Any wrong advertisement which amounting to a loss to the customer, then they have to compensate that. Lot of restrictions on the advertisement. Somebody say five minutes to the airport. What is five minutes to the airport? How do you go within five minutes? If somebody not able to achieve that, then it is a wrong advertisement. World class amenities. Who certified it's called world class amenities? So, so those are all the challenges which is they are part of this industry. And have you seen any other industry gives this type of advertisement? Answer is no. So the, the advertisement should be a practical and the real, real, really deliverables. Withdrawal is based on the percentage of completion of method, which I already have dis discussed with you. Website or updation disclosure. Every quarterly, the progress should be, uh, uh, should be updated. Refer to section 11 and the rule 15 of the Kerala. What is a sold inventory? Unsold inventory. How much work is completed? What is the progress of the work? And how many complaints are there? How many approvals have received? Any litigations are there? Entire information to be mentioned in the website. Read the objective of the act. Symmetry of information. Information should flow from the author builder to the customer without any holding back. This is called updation disclosure. Have you heard that? Have you heard earlier? promoter says that sir last unit is left if you don't buy it it is not available to you now i can see that how much is available how many how much is sold 
quarter on quarter what is the movement of the inventory whether sold or not how much is the performance in terms of the progress of the work you say sir everything is built sir another three months i can complete i didn't really had a clue that whether it can be completed in three months go back and check in website what is the percentage is completed 95 percentage okay i can believe say 60 percent completed yes took the three years can i believe it is completed within three months by 40 percent answer is no next the carpet area friends we all know that this industry practice something use unit of measurement is what what is the sale of unit of measurement in the era type it how do they sell it is called super built up area are a saleable area and if you go back That's and check there is no area. definition to a super built up area there is no definition for a saleable area it is a word which is created over the period and you really can't measure this super built up area and saleable area but all the years we were paying our money based on the super built up area saleable area now to bring the standardization bring the standard practices across all carpet area is brought into the picture carpet area is defined clearly so every building project should be sold based on the project area don't we see that there is a transparency in the system yes this is a transparency alteration in the project specifications or the uh, uh, plan modification then two third consent earlier it's a one sided agreement always they had a retained the right to modify without any consent that is not permitted section 14 is very clear plan modification or a specification modification come back and ask the customers how much two third allot is not 100% if you take two third allot is consent go back and modify that then project accounts and audit had you uh, uh, prior to rera nobody knows what is a project accounts it is a project account not entity account earlier it was a entity account income tax gst bank or everybody will ask you entity account rera ask you the project account the money which you have collected for the project has been spent for the project this customer which you have collected money is entitled to get his unit there is no entity accounts under rera it is called project accounts under rera project audit under rera so it's at more almost important as a chartered accountant to advise to the customer builders how do you maintain the accounts for the purpose of rera how do i reconcile with other other uh, statute like a gst or income tax or labor so it at most important nobody else can advise the uh, builders other than a chartered accountant in terms of the maintenance of the accounts agreement for sale friends we all know that agreement for sale was a depending on the wisdom or the experience of the professional who used to advise to the uh, builders it may be a two pages another builder used to give 200 pages both are agreement for sale okay but there was no standard mechanism now act brings the standardization by way of notifying the agreement for sale section 13 of the act is notified this is agreement for sale for a project and all the contents of the agreement for sale should present when you enter with the customer there should not be a dilution in the terms of those so agreement for sale is standardized now when you go to kanyakumari to jammu and kashmir the terms of the agreement the contents of the agreements are same one cannot travel beyond the act earlier it talks about 24% in case of the customer delay the payment of installments and 10 rupees per square feet in case of a promoter to delay the delivery now nothing doing very clear both is under the same same steps same uh, footings both in case of a delay in payment sbi mclr plus 2% maximum in case a builder delays the project he should also pay sbi plus 2% mclr 2% standardization so these are all the post era practices which is very very important have we come across i hope most of you have come across all these aspects even pre era how it used to be now at the, how it impacts the industry why i am insisting the members to know it is not about you practice era but while you advise the clients when he comes to the real estate industry these are all the industry standard this is a regulatory mechanism which is inbuilt in this industry for somebody to come and do the business 
that is what i said in the initially it is not about you issuing the rera certificates that is a very a small or maybe a 1% opportunity one has this is a bigger opportunity for somebody to advise in terms of how to carry out the real estate business post rera regime what is a transformation what is a mandatory practices which is inbuilt in this is very important so these are all the very few things which i felt for the members to uh, 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 must know and must know practices of this so next is in terms of the uh, customer transaction how the customer transaction should happen uh, uh, suhel can you touch upon yeah. this yes sorry earlier i lost my network and um, so now um, the um, as we know that uh, a purchaser is now referred to an referred to as an allotty under the act so if you see the definitions there is no definition um, as a purchaser but what uh, every purchaser of a real estate uh, in a real estate project is referred to as an allotty um, and an allotty includes a person to whom an allotment is made and is also subsequently trans if the if the property is transferred let's say an apartment is purchased and subsequently sold to another person that or that person is also referred to as an allotty under the act now in case of uh, a sale to be made in a real estate project of course uh, booking form is not mandated but uh, that is how the transaction now has to um, take place because an allotment has to be made so once a booking form is uh, filled in by an allotty and the initial booking amount is paid then a promoter should or it's not it's not a mandate but may issue an allotment letter under which the particular unit or a plot or a villa whatever for which an application has been made would come to be allotted under the allotment letter and subsequently under the allotment or the booking form the maximum money that can be received is 10% of the total sale price so any amount more than 10% if it has to be received from an allotty in a project then it is mandatory that the agreement for sale has to be entered into and that sale agreement has to be registered which is mandated under section 13 what mr vinay was just uh, um, referring to or discussing so and once majority bookings happen in a project that is more than 51% bookings happen under section 11 which deals with the um, obligations of the promoter or duties of the promoter it is mandated that an association of allotees be formed so when we don't form the association when everything is sold and handed over but now the association of allotees or the apartment owners association whatever you want to call it should be formed when the moment 51% booking happens in a project because in case of revocation of a registration of a project or anything where the project is either abandoned by a promoter or has to be taken over by the association of allotees so it becomes necessary that the association is already in place and also in case of uh, lapse of a project the association of allotees gets a first right of refusal to take over the project so for all these purposes to make sure that there is an association the act mandates that the moment 51% booking happens the association should be formed so once the development works are completed so it is important to note that the definition of an occupancy certificate under the act also covers water sanitary and electricity connections and the development works are also defined under the act which also include the internal and external development work so essentially whatever is promised to the allotty and whatever is there in the plan sanction so all of this should be completed once it is completed merely obtaining an occupancy or a completion certificate would not mean the project is completed it is essential that everything has to be completed we had the practice that um, the apartments would be completed or occupancy certificate would be obtained but the clubhouse and all other amenities and facilities would take a couple of years subsequent to the handover of the allotment to complete that is not permissible now because if a date um let's say the promoter has set a date of um, 1st june 2022 so within which time all development works have to be completed and if the promoter does not hand over the apartment on such a date then the promoter will become liable to pay compensation by way of interest on the delay 
So um, completion now means completely a different thing um, as against uh, what was earlier being practiced. And conveyance should happen within three months from the date of occupancy certificate being obtained. That is, the moment occupancy certificate is obtained or a completion certificate in respect of a project is obtained, the promoter is now required to issue notice to the purchasers to come forward and take conveyances. And uh, uh, once the notice is received, a lot is under an obligation to come forward and get the sale deed registered within two months from the date of such notice. So in case of um, there are a um, um, couple of protections that are given even subsequent to the execution of the sale deed that is conveyance. One is the protection as against any defect in the title. So under section 18.2, so that protection goes in perpetuity. That is at any point of time, even let's say the after 15, 10 or 15 years, if it is found that the title to the land is a disputed title and then because of which the allottee is going to suffer a loss, um, uh, which is similar to had RERA been there, the project in Kochi, which was uh, demolished, the allottees could have gone against the promoter and sought for refund of all the money. Um, but of course, uh, in such cases, like similar to such cases where the title to the land is lost or the title becomes defective because of which an allottee suffers a loss, the allottee can go against the promoter without any limitation in terms of time. Then the defect liability now extends up to five years from the date of possession. So earlier, the defect liability that would uh, normally be given is one year. Now the act mandates that it is for five years. So for five years from the date of possession, within, if any, if there is any defect, that is found, the allottee can, can, can bring it to the notice of the promoter and the promoter is required to rectify that defect within 30 days, failing which if the, if the allottee goes ahead and gets something done in the either in the apartment or in the building, then the allottee will be entitled to compensation, recover that as compensation from the promoter. And handover to association, of course, under section 17, there is a transfer of title. Um, this is still um, kind of... Um, not very crystallized in terms of uh, the practices that are prevalent in the South Indian states, um, because one, the transfer of uh, the common area still has not been uh, defined as to how the transfer has to happen uh, to the association of allottees. However, the act mandates that uh, the carpet area or the property that is sold to the allottee is transferred to the allottee and the remaining common areas along with all the documents and all the other money that is collected from the allottees is to be transferred to the association of, of allottees. So this is the um, this is the gist of the customer transactions under RERA. Of course, all of this to a certain extent was um, there earlier, but however, it was not mandated now. It is mandatory that this has to be followed and uh, an allottee can insist that all these things are followed completely because these are mandatory provisions under the act. Um, Vinay, um, Vinay, I need to, I need to um, leave for the airport, so I'll okay. take a leave. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. So um, we'll also be winding in very few minutes, another two, another five to ten minutes. So hell, thank you okay. so much for joining. In spite of you travel to Mumbai and attend okay. the court, thank you and appreciate yeah. your commitments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I thank the Institute for inviting me. I'm so sorry because of the urgent travel. I couldn't uh, participate uh, completely and my network is bad. I'm sitting in somebody else's office. So thank you so much and uh, good night, everyone. Thank you. So friends, I'll tell you, I know that it's beyond 5.30. I requested the chairman to permit me to talk about five to 10 minutes more. I'm sure that like it may be of interest up to you because this slide is about customer transaction. Have you seen that something which is uh, uh, applicable to you also when you purchase some of the project in an apartment, you ensure that this is completely followed by everybody. It may be by for you or it is for your customer or your builder where you advise them in terms of follow this. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, this is something like penalty for delayed project where uh, in terms of the registration delayed, they have started levying the project for the uh, delayed project registration. Please ensure that in case of any project which is 
not registered, invite and uh, uh, advise the client to register without living, without incurring a penalty. Friends, one more which, which I would like to mention. This is a statue where penalty is highest in any other statue. You might have not heard about the type of penalties this statue is inbuilt. If you are not registered a project, authority has a right to levy up to 10% of the project cost. I'm talking about project cost 10%. I don't know whether builder will get that much of profits if he complete a project, but penalty is 10%. Consider it's a 10 crore project. They can levy one crore as a project if they're not registered and sold before registration if they have sold the unit to somebody. So please ensure that these are very harsh in terms of the penalty. If the authority takes it seriously, the promoter would be really at risk. Any other non-compliance, whether you have not filed the quarterly update, not taken the certificate, withdrawn the money up to 5%, they can levy a penalty on what? Project cost. What we all know is 500 rupees, 5,000, 1,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees are something as a penalty but this is very harsh in terms of the penalty. Ensure this is to be complied at all point of time. Couple of uh, 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 judgments in, in uh, where there is a professionals are made responsible for issuing the wrong certificate. We have a classic case in terms of Maharera where the Manoj Duval is a, is a Former president of practicing in India Architect and Town Planning Association, he himself issued a certificate which is erroneous. He has ended with uh, uh, fighting with the tribunal and also high court, uh, where uh, it has become very harsh on him in terms of for issuing the wrong certificate. Finally, he said, it is not only me, even the, all these planning authorities were also involved while I issuing. Why are you making me only as a part of it? So to that extent, this has been had and uh, disposed finally. And other, other uh, some of the uh, important judgments under RERA, which any act, you know that there is a, always by default, there is a constitutional validity of that act. So this is also not an exception, which is failed, but it's completely, the Supreme Court has knocked down, nothing doing, it is completely in, uh, valid and there is no invalidity or there is no against the constitution. There are registration and exemptions of the project. There are various case laws across Supreme Court, High Court, and also the tribunal and the authorities. And applicability of RERA for industrial or lease units, unregistered project, the project belongs to 10 years back, is need not to register, still is RERA applicable. There are various judgment to that. Display plan at the uh, uh, project site, Supreme Court has given a order, not displayed, pay penalty, interest and refund and delayed possession of the apartment section 18 which i already disclosed rare to supersede on the one sided agreement buyers builders agreement which which i mentioned in the agreement of sale also cannot be a one sided agreement and it always to be a fair agreement and constitution of appellate tribunal is also within the purview of it and Supreme Court, which I mentioned, some of the uh, important judgment, uh, Neil Kamal Real, it is, it is the one of the best judgment on this act, which was uh, held that it is constitutionally valid. And also a government, the central government in where the PIL filed by Chandra Chud, uh, where it says that uh, Sir Justice Chandra Chud has uh, uh, delivered a judgment and a direction to the central government builders buyers agreement should be implemented with the real uh, intention with achieving the objective of the act. This is a pioneer uh, urban land, which we know that whether IBC prevails or RERA prevails, this is a pioneer urban land and infrastructure limited versus Union of India and others, where it is decided, where the order has been passed. IBC is a code, which is a later code than the RERA, then IBC prevails over RERA and various other statute which require some information, some knowledge, some understanding by a professional before he advise to any real estate client. Fundamentally, a contract is a must, contract act. There is an offer, acceptance, consideration, or in terms of breach of contract. Fundamental contract act is a must. Transfer of property act, which is a mandatory for us to understand the impact of it. Registration act, 
Town and Country Planning Act, Urban Development Laws, Building Bylaws, of course, GST income tax is a mandatory. Respective entity, how the industry, how the project should be structured. Like if you say that the moment you have a company, it is restricted to borrow the loan from any of the customers or the third party. In case of LLP, there would be a dispute. In case of a partnership, unlimited liability. How do I structure from where and which in which entity I should uh, bring the project? In case, if you bring all the project in one entity, consider if one financial institution go to IBC, all the project of that entity is at stake. So one should really look at that how do I structure the project? How do I advise the client? So with this, I'm concluding my presentation. If any questions uh, the members have, I can happy to take it. You can post it. My mail ID is there. You can uh, write the questions at any point of time. Uh, I love to answer to those questions in case of if I, if I, if in the, in case of if there is a constraint of time as of now. With this, I am concluding my presentation. Back to the organizers. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Vinay sir. Uh, first of all, I must uh, mention that uh, Section 56 of the Income Tax Act uh, talks about income from other sources. Now, uh, dear grads, sir. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pointed out the section 56 of the RERA Act also, and it's uh, income from other sources for chartered accountants. So, so thanks a lot. <laughs> Very nice. Huh? So, yeah. lots of inputs that uh, we had uh, received from you. Uh, I think Suhail sir is uh, missing. Uh, yeah, I think so. So even uh, that uh, thing that uh, 15 2017 that the project is uh, not completed has to go for the RERA uh, commencement and things like that. It's uh, quite a bit interesting. And uh, in Kerala, as you had mentioned, that uh, there are lots of NRIs. In fact, lots of most of the Kerala Keralaites are investments. In and, yeah, and uh, obviously they find it much comfortable in giving the builder whatever uh, they need at. Uh, they will be coming once in a year and of course in the pandemic year they had not visited kerala for once in two years or something and uh, they are happening to think that uh, the projects are uh, happening and things like that so in fact i think uh, we must start advising our nra clients so that uh, on the litigation part and especially we can file the litigation with the rara and uh, how to file a complaint against the dealer and things like that it's a professional opportunity so, in fact, I think uh, by, uh, by the introduction of this uh, RERA Act, most of this uh, will be uh, stopped and this inordinate delay in these projects uh, will also be stopped. So, I think in the last March 22 in Kerala itself, the Kerala RERA authorities has issued the ultimatum that almost all the projects register or face the music. Uh, last March, they had uh, issued a public notice. So, obviously, uh, as you said, you had uh, talked much in detail, the key takeaway that the Chartered Accountant's uh, certification is the final word uh, for drawing from the book of account from, from the bank account, which holds the 70 percentage of the advance money received by the builder. So the responsibility is huge, especially we need to check the certificates of the architect, the engineer, even the books of accounts, the project books. Uh, and including the tally, uh, the GST and uh, the income tax part, all these things are a huge thing. So lots of responsibilities uh, to us uh, chartered accountants and definitely lots of areas uh, for us chartered accountants. So thanks a lot. Um, I will be obviously passing the baton for the formal vote of thanks to Satish. But before the same, I will just to inform, like inform the um, members that uh, the today's uh, webinar was, uh, uh, was in fact uh, coordinated by uh, uh, RERA Consultants LLP and they have an office in Cochin, opposite Lotus Club, Variam Road, Cochin. And uh, Mr. Joju uh, is available for all your doubts and all your uh, uh, needs. And his number is 8848-220-320. I will be passing on the number into the groups and you can contact uh, Mr. Joju. And uh, I would like to formally... Uh, uh, do the vote of thanks part. Uh, I would like to request uh, Satish TG, the Secretary of the Shoe Branch. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, dear members. Uh, today we had a good discussion on the RERA. I think uh, 
um cevin and vinay tyagraj and uh, advocate suhail ahmed has made a wonderful effort to educate our members about the professional opportunities in rara and uh, various issues in rara i on behalf of thrissur branch propose our sincere gratitude to ca vinay tyagraj and his advocate suhail ahmed i also thank uh, um mr joju and uh, rara consultants llp for the uh, support to conduct today's webinar also i thank uh, ca polson for the warm introduction of our faculties and uh, the members have actively participated in the webinar through their chats i thank all members who joined us today and a special thanks to those who participated in q and a section once again thank you all